Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go through a lab report here. I know uh, I had some feedback over just some clarification points of a lab report. So let's start with just a title page. We've got the title of the lab up at the top, right? You come down about midways, you're going to put your name and your class. Notice the class will be WKU Chemistry 108. The name would be your name, right? You don't actually have to write in name and class, but you would put those in. Down at the bottom will always be your due date, right? That's the date in which the lab is actually turned in. And that is what a title page looks like. I think most of us are doing a good job on that, but a few had questions. So there is the title page, right? And then we want to move into, now I've created a new rubric for this as well. And I'm going to go over here. So the first thing is, is you want to come up and introduce your hypothesis or your objective. Now this is all in your rubric and posted online as well, but I thought I would talk about it. Um, the hypothesis or objective of the lab is clearly identified. If you're going to use a hypothesis, it should be written as an if-then-because statement. Right? And if it's an objective, you want no, no more than two sentences explaining the goal of the lab. Now, as long as you're watching these online and you're doing the labs virtually, an objective is all that you need. However, when we do come back to class and we're going to put um, experiments back into your hands, rather than just watching them, then we will move back into hypothesis mode and we'll work on hypotheses uh, together for a moment or two. And then, you know, you would be on your own to try to come up with some of those hypotheses a little bit later. But the first one or two we do back, we'll work on hypotheses together. That moves us into the procedure and materials section. Uh, the materials are everything that you need in order to completely do the lab, right? So everything that you need in order to complete the lab. So here I stated on here, all items needed to complete the lab. So that means chemicals, tools, and give me specifics. Don't just say graduated cylinder. They come in different sizes. So you'll need to specify, is it a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder or is it a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder? Uh, you know, don't just say a test tube. Well, what size test tube? Is it a 10 ml test tube or a 20 ml test tube? Okay, once that is done, all the items are listed out, then you're gonna move into the procedure section. Procedures are step by step. Notice they are not a paragraph form. They need to be clear, they need to be detailed, and specific enough that they can be duplicated by other students, right? A lot of folks have issues with that by not giving me enough detail, and so, if I were to ask you, could another student do this, uh, you would probably say no, right? And so, in other words, a student that maybe had missed school or missed lab that day came in and say the copier was down or I couldn't get them a digital copy. And I would say, hey, look off of so-and-so's. She's got all of that procedure written down. So could they take your procedure and it perform the lab exactly as it was supposed to be done? All right. Then we move into data and calculations. I'm going to go back to the rubric over here because it does a better job. Data is representation of the data and calculations are accurate, detailed, and easy to understand. All units and figures are correct. Now, units, right? Notice that you might want to underline that word, units. So don't just give me a number. If you say, you know, the number was 32.6. I gotta have a unit with that. So I can't have 32.6 and just leave it blank. You need to tell me if that milliliters, is that uh, liters, what what are we measuring, right? Are we measuring, you know, 32.6 hamburgers? I don't know, right? So you need to specify units always. Also notice there that graphs are labeled and complete. If you're submitting a graph or a chart, you wanna make sure that they have a label. Calculations are also part of this section. Under the data heading, uh, one example of each calculation is given. The measurements are correct level of accuracy. We talked about accuracy. And significant figures are also correct. So I'll just be double checking those as you do your calculations. Also making sure that you have units in place, right? Units are important, okay? All right, once we're done with the data section, the calculations and data section, then we move on to the conclusion section. And again, I've spelled out more specifics for you this time to help some of you guys along. Four to six paragraphs that shows connection between the purpose and the results achieved. 
right? So you can connect back to your objective. You can connect back to your hypothesis. But we want to be able to see the connection, right? The connection. You want those discussed in reference to theory. Now, it might be that we're talking about specific heat. We need to be able to talk about specific heat. Uh, it might mean that we're talking about accuracy and precision or whatever those bold terms were that we had in our lab manuals, right? Those are your theory references that you need to explain. You can define them and then tie them back to this lab, right? So for example, if it was uh, precision and accuracy, what you might wanna do is say, okay, in the lab, uh, we noticed the, first of all, I'll give you a definition. What is precision? What is accuracy? And then tie it back to the lab. Well, precision was uh, when we were measuring X, Y, and Z, right? We were sure to get precise measurements and this is how these connected, right? And then also in your conclusion section, you notice there it says real world applications, right? And error analysis right above that. So make sure you take time to do that. Again, four to six solid paragraphs is what your conclusion should consist of. Format and neatness. Presentation of your work is neat, well organized, it is typed. Um, paragraph form and no use of pronouns. There's your pronouns, right? Uh, so in your conclusion, you would be a paragraph, right? And then uh, everywhere else would be step-by-step -step or bullet points, okay? But no pronouns, no he, she, we, they, I. Uh, illustrations and graphs or figures emphasize important facts. So you knew what you were doing in your data section. The data looked great, and that would get you to the highest level there. Now, all of these have good, fair, poor, uh, no credits, right? So you can go through each section of these in your rubric, which is already listed for you. And then finally is the prelim questions. Uh, all prelim questions are completed correctly, right? The good, you might leave one blank. Fair, you're leaving two blank. Poor, three blank. And then any more than that would receive no credit, right? So this is an updated rubric for you guys, right? And I encourage you to go back and look at it. Uh, everything that we need in our lab reports is there, right? And it's spelled out pretty clearly for you guys exactly what it is I'm looking for. Uh, and your title page is there as well, right? Uh, so take time to reference that. Take time to study uh, this and uh, pull up your rubric. If you've got questions, I'll be happy to answer those. But uh, that's one of the thing, one of the results that I found uh, through our end of the year course assessment for me was that a uh, few of you felt like you needed more time and more structure on your lab reports. So I'm hoping this helps you. If not, please get with me and tell me more specifically if you need to look at a specific section. So maybe you're like, hey, I'm pretty good up until conclusion and then I get lost, or I really struggle with the data section. And we can dive into looking at those sections more in depth. But this is a great general overview of what the expectation is from your lab reports. And again, I'll post an exemplar so that you can look at a sample uh, lab report as well. All right. All right. Just keep in contact. Let me know what your needs are.